In this video, we're going to talk about the alternating series test. Now, you need to know what an alternating series is. And it's basically a series that alternates in sign. It's constantly changing from positive to negative and so forth. So let me give an example of one. So consider the series that starts from 1, goes to infinity, and it has this sequence, negative 1 raised to the n times, let's say, 1 over n. And let's begin by listing out a few terms. So when n is 1, the first term will be negative 1. And when n is 2, it's going to be 1 over 2. And then if we follow the pattern, negative 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4, and so forth. Now, if you recall, the series 1 over n is the harmonic series, and that diverges. But because the signs are alternating, this is known as the alternating harmonic series. Will the alternating harmonic series, will it converge or diverge? Well, let's find out. Let's apply the alternating series test. So what exactly is the alternating series test? So first, we need to have a series in one of the two forms. It's going to be negative 1 to the n times a sub n, or it can be in this form too. It could be negative 1 to the n plus 1. Now, n, n plus 1, that can vary. That just controls the sign. It makes it either positive or negative. But a sub n is the sequence. And we're going to say that the sequence is positive. It's greater than 0. Now, in order for the alternating series test to work, two conditions must be met. The first one is that it has to pass the divergence test. So if we take the limit as n goes to infinity for the sequence a sub n, it has to equal 0. If it doesn't, then the series automatically diverges. The second condition is that the sequence has to be decreasing. So the next term has to be less than or equal to the previous term. So let's go ahead and apply this to the problem at hand. So first thing is that you need to define what a sub n is. a sub n is 1 over n for this problem. This part just controls the sign. Now let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n or 1 over n. Now 1 over infinity, that converges to 0. So the series passes the divergence test. Now we need to see if it's a decrease in sequence. So we need to show that a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n. Now a sub n is 1 over n. And a sub n plus 1, that's 1 over n plus 1. Now we could see that this is automatically true for all n. If you plug in, let's say, n equals 1, this is going to be 1 over 2, and this is just going to be 1. 1 is greater than a half. So since the denominator n plus 1 is greater than n, then this fraction has to be less than the other fraction. Keep in mind, if you increase the value of the denominator of a fraction, the value of the whole fraction goes down. So now that we've established that the series passes the divergence test, and at the same time, we have a decrease in sequence, then by the alternating series test, this particular series we can say converges. And that's all you need to do for these types of problems. So let's work on some more examples. So consider the series, which goes from 1 to infinity. We're going to say it's negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 times, let's say, 5n plus 3 over 2n minus 7. Feel free to pause the video. So what do you think? Will this series converge or diverge? And is it an alternating series? Because it has to be an alternating series in order to do the alternating series test. So if you see negative 1 to the n or negative 1 to the n plus 1, automatically you know it's an alternating series. So we can use that test on this. So what's a sub n? a sub n is everything outside of this. So this is our a sub n sequence. 
So let's start with the divergence test. Let's take the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n or 5n plus 3. Now a simple way to evaluate the limit is you can multiply the top and the bottom by 1 over n or you could use L'Hopital's rule. So if you take the derivative of the top and the bottom we're going to get the limit as n goes into infinity and then the derivative of 5n plus 3 is just 5 and the derivative of 2n minus 7 is 2. So the limit does not equal 0. It's equal to 5 over 2. So because the limit as n approaches infinity of a sub n, because it doesn't equal 0, it fails the divergence test. And it also fails the alternating series test. So the conclusion is that this series, it diverges. Now let's go ahead and work on some more problems. So feel free to pause the video if you want to try it yourself. Go ahead and try that one. Now the first thing I would do is rewrite the series and put it in a form that it's more familiar to me. So I'm going to separate negative 1 to the n and the n factorial. So this is what I now have. So I can clearly see that this is my a sub n term. So let's start with the divergence test. The limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n, or 1 over n factorial. Well, we know that the limit as n goes into uh, infinity for 1 over n, that goes to 0. So 1 over factorial will definitely go to 0. Because n factorial would be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, and this can keep on going. So it passes the divergence test. Now let's see if we have a decrease in sequence. So can we establish that a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n? a sub n is 1 over n factorial. And a sub n plus 1, that's 1 over n plus 1 factorial. So since we have a denominator with a higher value, the fraction will have a lower value. So therefore, this is true for all n values, particularly when, especially when n is equal to a greater than 1, which is what we're dealing with here. So we have a series that passes the divergence test, and we have a decrease in sequence. So by the alternating series test, we could say that this series converges. And so that's it for that example. Now let's work on another problem. So let's say this is negative 1 to the n plus 1 divided by 5 to the n. Will the series converge or diverge? So first I'm going to rewrite it. So this is negative 1 to the n plus 1 and then 1 over 5 to the n. So a sub n is 1 over 5 to the n. So just like before, we're going to start with the divergence test. Let's take the limit as n goes to infinity. So this is 1 over 5 to the n. Now, when n approaches infinity, 5 to the n will approach infinity. And 1 divided by infinity is basically 0. So we could say that the limit goes to 0. So it passes the divergence test. Now let's see if it passes the second condition. So is the next term less than or equal to the previous term? a sub n is 1 over 5 to the n. So a sub n plus 1 is going to be 1 over 5 to the n plus 1. Now 5 raised to the n plus 1 is greater than 5 to the n. Therefore, 1 over 5 to the n plus 1 has to be less than 1 over 5 to the n. So therefore, we have a decrease in sequence. So both conditions are met, which means that the series converges. 
Now let's work on another example. Consider the series negative 1 to the n times n over ln n. So I'm going to rewrite it like this. So this is my a sub n. And will the series converge or not? So as always, let's start with the divergence test. So the limit as n approaches infinity for n divided by the natural log of n, what's going to happen here? Is this going to go to 0 or is this going to go to infinity? Well, let's use L'Hopital's rule. The derivative of n is 1, and the derivative of the natural log of n is 1 over n. Now, 1 divided by 1 over n, that's n. And to show that, you can multiply the top and bottom by n. n times 1 over n is 1. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n, which is infinity. So the first criteria is not met. Therefore, we could say the series, it diverges. Now, what if we tweak the last problem just a little bit? Now, let's say it's negative 1 to the n plus 1, but this time, instead of n over ln n, it's going to be the natural log of n divided by n. So this is our a sub n sequence. Will it converge this time, or will it still diverge? Well, let's start with the divergence test. And let's use L'Hopital's rule. So the derivative of ln n is 1 over n, and the derivative of n is 1. So this is just the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 divided by n, which is going to go to 0. So the first condition have been met. Now what about the second one? Can we establish that we have a decrease in sequence? Is the next term less than the previous term? So a sub n is ln n over n. And a sub n plus 1, it's going to be ln n plus 1 over n plus 1. So right now, we can't really make a an easy statement say that this term is less than the other one. So in this case, we need to take the first derivative of the function and see if it's always decreasing. So let's say that f of x it's going to be the corresponding function in terms of x, so it's the natural log of x over x. And let's use the quotient rule. So keep in mind, the derivative of u over v is going to be v u prime minus u v prime divided by v squared. So v is x, and then u prime, the derivative of ln x, that's going to be 1 over x minus u, which is ln x, times v prime, that's 1, over v squared. So this is 1 minus the natural log of x over x squared. So let's make a sign chart. So we have a critical number at 0, because that's when this is going to be 0. And if you set 1 minus ln x equal to 0, so 1 is equal to ln x, and you know that ln e is 1, so x has to be equal to e. That's the other critical number. Now, if we plug in, let's say, 1. 1 squared is positive, and 1 minus the natural log of 1, that's going to be positive. Now, if we plug in a number that's greater than e, let's say like 10, 1 minus ln 10, that's going to be negative. So, the sequence is decreasing 
on the interval e to infinity. Now, 1 is somewhere in the middle here. So let's say 1 is right there. So the function's actually increasing from 1 to e. So it's not always decreasing. However, it is decreasing as n gets very, very large. So it's only increasing for a short time, but for the rest of the time, it's decreasing. So overall, this is a decreasing sequence. It goes up initially, and then towards infinity, it keeps going down. So the net result is that this, in the long run, is a decreasing sequence. And that's the important thing that we need to keep in mind. So we can make the statement that a sub n plus 1 is less than or equal to a sub n when n is greater than e. But e is 2.718, and n is defined in terms of integers. So we can say that this is true when n is equal to or greater than 3. So we've established that for the long run, we have a decrease in sequence, and it passes the divergence test. So we can say that this series converges. Consider the series cosine n pi divided by n. Can we apply the alternating series test to it? Well, let's write out a few terms. So when n is 1, we're going to have cosine 1 pi. Cosine pi is negative 1. And so negative 1 divided by 1, that's just negative 1. Now when n is 2, cosine 2 pi is positive 1 but we're going to divide it by n or 2, and then cosine 3 pi, that's negative 1, and so we're going to get this. If you notice, this looks like the alternating harmonic series in the form of negative 1 raised to the n times 1 over n. In fact, they produce the exact sequence. So automatically, we know that the series converges. So what's our a sub n in this problem? So negative 1 to the n is the same as cosine n pi, if n is an integer. So therefore, we could say that a sub n is technically just 1 over n. The cosine n pi is simply to create the alternating series effect. So if we take the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n, that's going to be 0, even if you take the limit of this whole thing. Now, you'll have to use a squeeze term, but this whole thing will approach 0 as n goes to infinity, because cosine n pi is just going to alternate between negative 1 and 1, while this continues to decrease to 0. So negative 1 over infinity that's still 0, and positive 1 over infinity, that's still 0. So the last thing we need to establish is that we do have a decrease in sequence. So our a sub n is 1 over n, and we know that 1 over n plus 1 is less than 1 over n. So the second criteria has been met, which means that this particular series converges. And so that's it for this video. So hopefully it gave you a good foundation in terms of like how to use the alternating series test. Thanks for watching.